The good news is an open heart is actually the core truth of who you are. So it's not a, a skill that has to be learned from outside. It's not like playing the piano or doing complex math equations or dribbling a basketball or things that someone needs to teach you. When children come into this world, when babies come into this world, their hearts are open. We as the adults Sadly, in our own lack of skill, in our own fear, tend to act in certain ways that over the years, <coughs> sometimes faster, but over the years the children's hearts start to close a little bit more. Slowly, slowly, slowly. The world is no longer a place they can trust. They have to be on the defensive. They have to keep themselves protected. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Then somewhere along the way they get heartbroken or betrayed. Heart closes a little more. But our, our nature, the core truth of who we are is an open heart. This is why, by the way, being in love feels so good. When we fall in love, romantic love, love of our parent, love of our child, love of a, a tree, an animal, it feels so good because it brings us back into the truth of who we are, which is expansive. An open heart is expansive. It's, there is no separation between you and me. Here I am, open. And what I love is that the word courage comes from the same root that the word heart comes from in French, the word uh, in French for heart is cœur, and that that root is actually the same. And that courage literally, etymologically, is of an open heart. And I love that because it's expansion. Our nature, our self, is infinite. When we say we've been created not just by the Creator, but of the Creator, and the Creator is infinite, the true nature of ourselves is infinite. This is why when you think about words that we use to describe experiences that are beautiful, Think about just the words that we use. We're melting, we're merging, we're swimming, we're bathing, right? There are all these words of expansion. They're words of merging into that which is expansive and infinite. Oceans of love. No one says puddles of love. Oceans. It's infinite. It's expansive. We talk about volcanoes. There, there are all of these words that refer to A, an expansiveness, B, a losing of oneself into something bigger. So I am melting, I am merging, I am bathing, I'm dissolving, right? It's all this, okay? So, so that's taking me back to the truth of who I am, which is why it feels so good. Love is our source. 
when we love, it takes us back to our truth. And this is why we emphasize so much loving God. In the, in the songs that we sing in the Arati, there's a beautiful line that says, the highest form of love is love for God. And the whole bhakti tradition, the whole devotional tradition is all about loving God, loving God. Why? Who cares? I mean, is God sitting there going, for God's sakes, would someone please love me? God's not up there feeling lonely and miserable and waiting for us to love him. Or her, it, them. We love God because loving takes us back to who we are. So the first and most important piece, and this is the good news, is you're not going into uncharted waters. You're not going into a foreign place. You're actually going back to you. The bad news is it requires dismantling a lot of who you think you are. Because a lot of who we think we are is this constructed identity that requires us to hold onto it with a death grip. And love is vulnerable. Love is open. Love is permeable. If you can get into me, what's going to happen to me? That's scary. I've got this whole identity thing worked out. I know who I am. My job is going well. Everything is going well. We're all good. And if I let you in, what's going to happen to me? And by the way, interestingly, this is what happens to a lot of people when they come to India. Same thing. Because India gets inside you. Different way. It's not love of a being. But it's that same experience of, hey, wait, I didn't tell you you could get inside every cell of my being. I didn't tell you you get to run through me, change the very nature of who I am, bring up first the very best of myself and then the very worst of myself in oscillating 30-minute intervals. That's what India does. I always say that trying to keep India at an arm's length is like trying to hold up a stop sign at a tsunami. It's going to get inside. You can't stop it. And the same is with love. But from India, you can always turn around and leave if the fire gets too hot. With love, presumably, you're supposed to stay with the loved one. But this is where a lot of us create these dramas, right? If you're really honest, like ruthlessly honest about the dramas that are there in your love relationships, so many of them we create just because the fire is getting too hot because it's just getting a little too vulnerable, a little too open. My insides are just getting a little bit too liquefied. And so in order to really be open to love, you have to be prepared to say, this is more important to me than whatever identity I think I've created. You also have to create space for it, literally. Because the other bad news is that our current society has got us all so distracted, <coughs> so addicted to distraction, and love requires connection. 
Opening our hearts to love and opening our hearts to God are very, very similar. It's basically the same thing, just on two slightly different levels. One is to a person, the other is to God. But it's the same movement. It's the same movement of, instead of identifying just as this physical being, I'm prepared to expand. I want to expand. I want to melt, to merge, to swim, to drown. Because that's more important than this death grip I've got on my identity. But it requires attention. And so the first First piece, first most important step is create space in your life for it. And the second piece is be willing. So create literal space first, actual space first. And the second piece is be willing to let go of who you think you are. Because love is going to show you something totally different. And like India, it's going to show you the best of who you are that you never imagined possible, an expansion of yourself, a merging of yourself with the universe that you never thought possible, a giving, a compassion, a selflessness of yourself that you never thought possible. And it's going to show you the worst of yourself. Because it's going to pull up all the, you know, it's like a detox. It goes in and kind of pulls up all the stuff. That binge of fries you had 10 years ago that's sitting somewhere in your liver. Well, you do the right detox, it'll pull it out. That thing that happened in your family when you were 15 that traumatized you when you were 10, it traumatized you and you've locked it up in a box. Well, you can be sure when you open yourself to love, love is going to knock on that box and insist that the door come off it. And so we've got to be prepared to let that happen. But it's essential. Because if not, you miss life.